Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combalusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Kessel Run Resources, which is currently focused on exploration at its Huronium project located in northwestern Ontario. The company has had success at numerous zones at the project, including the Fisher Zone and the McKellar Zone. Additionally, the Kessel Run has also targeted geological structures on strike to the southwest of the Gold Shore Resources Moss Lake deposit. The company also owns the Bluff Point project on the same structural trend as the Rainy River Mine. Today, I have with me on the webinar, Michael Thompson, who's the President and Chief Executive Officer at Kessel Run. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first part, we'll, uh, Mike will provide an update on Kessel Run, and then in the second, we'll take your questions live during a Q&A session. You can submit your questions at any point throughout the webinar, and we'll get to as many as we can. To start, I'll handle the disclosures, and then I'll let Mike get into the presentation. So for Kessel Run, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Kessel Run corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Kessel Run specific disclosures. With that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Mike to update you on Kessel Run and what you have to look forward to with the story. Thanks, Taylor. So Kessel Run, we're exploring for near surface high grade gold in an emerging gold district in Northwestern Ontario. Uh, there's, again, the forward-looking statements. So Northwestern Ontario, you know, top-tier jurisdiction in Canada. Uh, you know, it's a great place to explore. Um, Multi-million ounce gold deposits uh, in the region. Um, both our projects are 100% owned. We have uh, the Heronian, which is a brownfield uh, story, and uh, Bluff Point, which is more of a greenfield story. Uh, both projects, you know, basically underexplored and, and uh, you know, for the most part, shallowly drilled. Um, we've been concentrating our efforts on the Heronian project. It has a past producing gold mine, uh, has an historic resource uh, as well. We have been uh, doing some work uh, uh, getting uh, Bluff Point advanced, um, you know, high grade and bulk tonnage targets at Bluff Point. Um, Lots of exploration in the last couple of years on Heronian. Lots of good results, which I'll go through. Uh, and I'll touch on Bluff Point at the end. Um, and we got a great team. So and more exploration uh, planned. So here's a bit of our cap structure. KES on the Venture Exchange. Uh, KSSRF on the QB, OTC QB. Uh, we're trading 3, 4 cent range, popping up to 5 occasionally. Um, Got about 94 million shares outstanding, 97 fully diluted. Uh, market cap sort of hovering in the 3 million uh, area. Uh, cash and cash equivalents uh, uh, with some shares in first mining that we have. We're floating in the in the five to six hundred thousand uh, dollar range. So we're 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 not flush with cash, but we're not under stress. We got a low GNA, so. Uh, you know, we, we can uh, wait out this, uh, uh, you know, term, turmoil in the markets and, and uh, uh, finance when, when necessary. Uh, management insiders have about 10% of the shares. Uh, bulk of that's me. Uh, I'm a big shareholder. I had, have been buying on the open market over the years. You can go look at my study report um, when, I'm, when I'm financially able. Uh, High net worth investors, uh, you know, friends, family, long-term supporters, fifteen uh, percent. Uh, institutions are in the fifteen percent range. You know, still uh, some good, strong uh, support from from our institutional investors. Um, and we do decent volume. Little, you know, it, we have some some dead spots, but uh, overall, I say we're, we're we do pretty healthy volume. So here's the a rundown of the team. Uh, myself, uh, I'm a geo geologist. Uh, I'm a founding partner and president of a consulting company, uh, Flaggate, in, in based out of Thunder Bay. It's a full service mineral exploration 
a consulting firm, uh, you know, big supporter of Kessel Run. Uh, most of my time is devoted to Kessel Run, uh, you know, but we ha we've got a great team uh, that, that, you know, has enabled Kessel Run to, to punch above its weight, essentially, I always say. Uh, I've got over 25 years experience, worked for Tech, Placer, uh, Gold Corp briefly, um, but mostly been in the junior sphere the last last uh, quite a while. Um, John DeCoste is CFO uh, based out of Vancouver. Uh, he runs a corporate management compliance firm. Uh, you know, very experienced, keeps us on the on the the right side of the the regulators, etc. Uh, Rodney Stevens, VP Corporate Development, uh, CFA. You know, he, he's really helped us on the capital uh, markets uh, side of things. And then rounding out the, the board is uh, Catlin Jeffs. She's a geologist, works in Chile uh, with Red Metal Resources, looking at uh, gold copper projects. And uh, Yana, who is a chartered accountant based out of Vancouver and a CFO of uh, a few CSE and, and OTC QV companies. So a really nice rounded out team on the, the sort of upper management side. Uh, and then, you know, with the Flatgate geologist and technical team, really, you know, we've got a really good, good team. Um, so here's Northwestern Ontario. Here's our backyard. Uh, Multi-million ounce gold deposits, uh, uh, development stage, advanced exploration stage. Um, you know, first minings, Cameron Gold Project, Treasury Metals, Goliath, uh, Agnico's Hammond Reef. Uh, uh, Way down in the the sort of southwest corner is New Gold's, the one producing gold mine in the region. Uh, New Gold's a rainy river mine, uh, which is on strike to our Bluff Point project, which I'll touch on at the end. Um, and then the one development project we've been really sort of keeping our eye on is our next door neighbor at Heronian, uh, Gold Shore Resources. Um, you know, all categories included. They're they're looking at a you know well over six million ounces in and combined and indicated and inferred. You're not supposed to do that, but just to round it a bit, you can see the, the actual numbers right there. Um, and they're our next door neighbor to, to, to uh, Heronian. So just touching on uh, Northwestern Ontario, uh, great geology, great people, uh, great infrastructure, you know, highways, uh, Trans-Canada Highway runs just north of, of the Heronian project. Uh, secondary highway secondary roads so you know heronian is you know, lots of secondary logging roads and that so infrastructure is great you know I, you drive underneath the the hydro transmission line hydro one which they're upgrading specifically uh to uh, uh make sure that there's enough uh power for the the you know upcoming mining boom and these all these projects that are not only gold but other other commodities like lithium etc that are are in development and, and foreseen to, to come on line over the next uh, number of years. Uh, it's a, Heronian is located about 100 kilometers west of Thunder Bay. So, you know, door to door, uh, you know, my door to the drill, drill door is an hour and a half tops, hour and a quarter. So here's a bit of a zoom in of, of the Heronian project, 100% um, owned. Uh, both projects are 100% owned. I, I, I'm, you know, stress that 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 gives us a lot of flexibility. We don't have any exploration expenditure commitments or option payments. So, you know, you've got a lot of clarity of what come what's coming up in the future, which is nothing. Uh, 46, nothing as far as payments go. Um, 4,600 hectares. Uh, so it's a good sized project. Lots of lots of potential. Lots of upside. Uh, as I mentioned, that historic resource that was done in 1998, um, about 500,000 ounces at, at 14 grams gold. Uh, it is historic. I stress that we're using it as a as a, an exploration guide only, not to be relied on. See the disclosures on on the the second slide for the full sort of wording of that. But uh, and then it was a past producer in the 30s. 1930s, uh, 30,000 ounces of, of gold, 170,000 ounces of silver. Um, multiple high grade and bulk tonnage targets. Um, two gold trends uh, the Heronian gold trend on the north, 
uh, right here, and then the the Moss Gold Trend in the the south, and and then that trends on to our southern part of our property. Um, Sorry, I'm just uh, going to erase this. There we go. There's the clear button. Um, so yeah, so sorry. Um, most of our efforts have been focused around the, the old Huronian mine uh, and sort of the future, uh, current and future, what, where we've been focusing, sort of getting uh, areas drill ready, you know, in this lull in the market where we're not drilling currently, but we've been working on this Pierce Lake target and the south that I just pointed out uh, that's on strike to, to the uh, Moss Lake deposit of Gold Shores and then sort of the strike extent of, of uh, the, the old mine site, uh, the McKellar West uh, target, and then that uh, circle up in the, the North Block target where we think there's there's some potential up there. So a little, so it's got a, it's a nice project in the sense it's, it's a brownfield project, you know, in the shadow of a head frame historic resource, but there's still lots of greenfield targets uh, that exist. So a quick, quick rundown of the history, Northwestern Ontario's first gold mine, discovered in 1871, uh, commercial production in the 30s, gets kicked around in the 80s, uh, 90s doesn't quite get off the, off the, uh, the runway, so to speak, um, but we pick it up in 2016, uh, bottom of the market, the, the buy low, sell high uh, philosophy. So uh, we, we got it pretty close to the lo that low of the market in 2000, late 15, early 16. Um, spent a few years getting the the data in it in, in, uh, into digital form, um, you know, built the model, got boots on the ground, ground truth started getting it drill ready essentially so we spent quite a few years uh boots on the ground you know when money and and the share price wasn't uh, uh the share price wasn't very high so we were very conscientious of of not raising too much money uh in, in a, a bad market and so we raised just enough to sort of get um get get it drill ready you know we we knew the pro project was was a top tier project so um wait for the market to come to us. It does in 2020, uh, enables us to raise uh, money with, a, with a, the help of Red Cloud. And uh, we've drilled 36,000 meters since, uh, from 2020 through 22. Um, we've expanded no, new known zones. We've discovered new zones. Uh, so currently in the last year or so and, and, coming, and coming up in the future, we'll continue to grow those known zones. Uh, outline new zones, and and we'll start uh, you know advancing that southern uh, area, our Pierce Lake tar Pierce target uh, to the southwest of the Moss uh, deposit. Um, and one of the tools that we are relying upon uh, that's really helped us out is this uh, uh, property wide um, magnetics and. Uh, uh, Electromagnetics, uh, same method that that uh, Goldshore used next door. Uh, they they did it in in twenty one, and uh, you know the, they've been very forthcoming you know, in in their thoughts on on their data and and this this specifically, uh, you know the the management team went through it with with my team uh, quite thoroughly their findings, and basically it helped them. Uh, outline new targets and, and extensions of, of uh, the Moss Lake deposit. And, and so enabled them to grow the resource quite, quite substantially. Uh, so we did the same survey. Um, you can see, uh, you know, the, the old mine site is, is on this, this flexure, um, you know, up at Moss, there's another flexure uh, where the Moss Lake deposit is. So, you know, this flexure here, this, this flexure here, there's so, some subtle breaks here. So these are all very viable targets. Um, so we're, we're, you know, this has been very instrumental in, in, in identifying new targets and, and places we're gonna uh, 
we're very positive we're going to find uh, uh, gold further gold mineralization. So here's a zoom in of, of the, the mine site area. Um, you know, when we started, there was uh, the Heronian zone the, that hosted the, the, the mine sites. Uh, and there's the Fisher zone, McKellar and Fisher North zone. So you can see we, we've, you know, really outlined uh, quite a few uh, new zones close to those known zones. Um, you know, parallel structures, sub-parallel structures. Uh, and it just shows the, to the, the, you know, the depth of the gold mineralizing system. Um, you know, what I like to see as a geologist is, is you know, that, that intense sort of alteration and, and multiple zones all in close proximity lends to very cost-effective exploration. You can hit uh, um, multiple targets with the same drill hole. Uh, you can, you're discovering new zones as you're, as you're backing up and, you know, sort of in the foot wall or the hanging wall of near, near known zones or what you're, what you're targeting. Um, and then, you know, down the road, it will lend itself to, to the economics, that proc, you know, proximity. Well, I'll, I'll go through the zones really quick. Uh, so Heronian, this, this is the old, uh, on the right, the, the sort of black and white or sepia. Um, that's the old mine site in the thirties. You can see they just dumped all the waste rock over the side. You know, that was the way they did it over it buries the zone. So when we, uh, started drilling, we were doing some, uh, drill pad, uh, prep and we had an excavator. So we, we dug, um, through the waste rock just to get eyes on, on the, uh, the, the actual Heronian zone, which, you know, had no surface expression because it was buried um, and nobody had, had seen it since the 30s, presumably, or, or possibly earlier. Um, so each of these terraces, uh, there's one there, is a quartz vein. Um, there was actually one right at the bottom in that hole. So, you know, I took this picture where I'm standing is, you know, the zone is 10 meters wide, but there's multiples of these quartz veins. Um, and just the, that shot is right beside this, this shaft here. There's three shafts. Um, there's one here and then there's another one that way. But, uh, anyways, um, so just keep that in mind, 10, you know, 10 meters wide plus multiple quartz veins. And so here's a, a, a long section, um, there's the, the middle shaft that I pointed out where we had dug that little trench there. Um, so each of these grayed out areas represents a mined out vein, except one vein, you know, one approximately, you know, three quarters of a meter to, a, you know, a meter plus uh, quartz vein. So there's multiple quartz veins still left in that 10 meter wide uh, uh, section, sort of in front and behind these these, uh, you know, grade mined out, uh, uh, voids. Um, so our thesis was there's a remnant resource left over. Uh, there's lots of gold mineralization. So this, so we started drilling in here, one to prove that thesis and two to sort of get a better handle on which way the gold mineralization was trending. Is it trending, uh, you know, down this way, you know, is there a, a second plunge? Yes. The, the answer is yes. So, um, you know, prove the thesis, basically. You know, we, we were getting some great hits. You can see that whole 70 uh, down close to the bottom, 13.6 grams over three meters, uh, you know, 10 and a half over, over close to two meters, 16 over over four meters and hole 54 up at the you know, closer to the top. So lots of gold mineralization left over. Um, so we proved the thesis. We didn't want to uh, start uh, drilling too much meters as we as we moved down uh, plunge, you start to eat up the, the meters and eat up the expiration budget. So we, we proved the thesis up, uh, we're ready to, to, to move, move on, um, going forward in the future to, to find more shoots and start to extend these. Um, I like showing this picture just because it, it reinforces that proximity of the zones. The drone that took this picture is hovering over the Heronian zone, approximately where that, that, uh, first picture where we, we dug through the, the waste rock. 
and and in the foreground is the Fisher North zone and, and sort of farther out is the the Fisher zone it's that's spitting distance basically between zones um, it's sort of you can see the drill and a pickup truck there for scale um, and as you can see the 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 roads uh, drill trails and not really roads but uh, drivable nonetheless uh, giving good access good infrastructure So here's a long section of the Fisher zone um, that uh, uh, you know, when we picked up the project, that was pretty much all that had been drilled. Uh, this spot is um, approximately where that drill is. Um, we so we've expanded the zone tremendously. You know what was a 75 meter by 75 meter ish. Uh, uh, zone. Uh, we've extended to 700 meters in strike length. We've got it down to approximately 200 meters depth. Um, you know, we're, we're, we outlined this little treasure box. I call it the treasure box up top, you know, where we get these fantastic uh, uh, drill intercepts, you know, six grams over 45 meters, uh, 15 over five, like, you know, high grade, um, very thick. And, you know, a little blowout, a little fold with a, a bit of a blowout. Uh, there's more to be found. They're they're not huge, but they will have a significant impact uh, on a resource eventually down the road. Um, typical, you know, intercepts are you know five or six grams over sort of three to five meters, three to six meters, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, that's sort of the the crux of it, um, and sort of in my head, what I use as a as a gauge. Um, if you're, if you're sort of, uh, looking at a, I don't know, a lot of people don't like the, the gram meter multiplication is multiply grams times meters. It, it's not something you can rely on as a metric, but it's, it certainly gives you a, a ballpark indicator, uh, uh, for a number, um, commonly used in the industry. Um, so yeah, we're, you know, going forward, we're, we're going to continue to expand that footprint of the zone. Um, and eventually, you know, start to, to back up and, and infill drill to get it to a, a drill density uh, for a resource estimate eventually. Um, you know, as I said, mentioned before, lots of lots of zones discovered, uh, multiple new zones in the, what I call the Fisher zone area now, what, what used to just be Fisher and Fisher North. We've, we've come to realize there's, there's so many uh, sub parallel zones and, and really rethinking the model and uh, uh, which, you know, is, is fantastic. It really lends itself to, to uh, um, you know, as I said, uh, the eventual e economics will, will uh, um, you know, be helped by the proximity of all these zones. There's, there's a shot of the, the Fisher zone, just a, a nice shot of the, the, the alteration, the mineralizing system, it bleaches it out, it's white, it's, it's you know, for the geologist, quartz veining, quartz flooding, sericite, you know, anchorite alteration, a um, little bit of visible gold uh, once in a while. Um, but yeah, easy to distinguish, easy to, you know, when you're drilling and you see a new zone, it's easy to see it. It's, it's very, has a quite distinct uh, uh, visual signature. Um, McKellar zone, essentially it's the Southwest extent of the Heronian zone. I like showing this picture just, uh, uh, mostly for the, the old drill collar. This is like a 1980s drill collar sitting in the middle of this, you know, 10 meter wide plus, uh, zone. It was, it was covered in, in gravel overburden, uh, when we picked up the property. So we stripped it off to get eyes on it, but this, this drill hole at that location had a um, a thinning, a, a pinching of the zone. But when actually it wasn't pinched, it was just that they didn't actually know where the zone was and drilled, colored the, the drill hole in the middle of it. So subsequently underestimated the thickness of the, the zone. Um, and then the picture on the left is, you know, under instead of underestimating the thickness of the zone, you're underestimating the uh, grade of the zone essentially so these these quartz veins are are the higher grade uh host 
to, and this is a, a more moderate grade, I call it, you know, three to five grams, whereas, the, whereas these cross ones are, you know, 15 grams. So if you're drilling this way, you're not hitting the high grade stuff very often. So the proper way to, to drill, I'm, I'm making a mess of it, but the, the proper way to drill is, is essentially slightly oblique. So you're, you're, you're cutting, you're making sure you're, 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 you're hitting the, the high grade stuff and, and giving a, a proper estimate uh, of, of the grade of the zone. So um, it, it's key, key understanding the geology. And again, why, why we did all that, that boots on the ground prep before we actually started drilling in 2020, you know, we spent, you know, years, years, uh, you know, doing a lot of hard work to, to effectively spend the big dollars when we go to drill. Uh, McKellar, same sort of situation as Fisher. When we got there, it was, you know, 75 by 75 meters. We, we've really expanded the footprint of McKellar. It's, it's 1200 meters by 150 meters, uh, depth now. Um, you know, you can see off, off a little bit of the, the workings from Heronian just uh, on the edge of it. But, uh, and then we have, we have significant strike potential that we, we haven't even touched with a drill. Um, we've had boots on the ground. We're, we're working hard to, to know exactly where the location of that zone is and, and get it ready for, for drilling, uh, in, in the near future. Uh, so yeah, we, you know, we've expanded the zone to 1200 meters. We've got probably another 12, 1500 meters to go. So lots of potential left at depth and on strike. And uh, there's a shot of that McKellar. Um, just sort of showing the, the, the density of the drilling and, and those kind of hits, you know, these, again, very similar to Fisher, you get the blowouts, you get the blowouts of, you know, 30, 30 grams over seven meters, but, you know, a, a more, uh, uh, what I think of as typical is, you know, five over five, six over six. Um, but in previous slide, you can see some of these blowouts, these 14 grams over, over 11 meters, um. You know, quite fantastic hits. Again, very, uh, you know, visually uh, uh, distinct uh, zone alteration. Looks slightly different than than uh, Fisher, but it's a slightly different host rock. So the alteration sort of manifests itself a, a, a little bit different. Looks a little bit different. But visible gold every once in a while, uh, dominated by quartz veins. So a quick summary of Heronian, we, we've completed 36,000 meters of drilling. Uh, we've got, you know, two very prospective uh, gold trends. We've got the Heronian gold trend, which is centralized by that brownfield sort of exploration in and around the mine site where, where most of our, our drilling has, has taken place, most of our efforts. Um, but we have lots, lots of uh, greenfield targets. We've got the West McKellar target. Um, that that we're we're starting to work on on that little flexure there. We've got the the north block target where you know we, we think this this structure that runs uh, through the Moss Lake deposit area. You can see that sort of offset of their proposed pit. Uh, we do think that that is you know related to the these flexures, and so we think this is a a, a pretty good target um, for gold mineralization. And then obviously this this flexure. In, in the the Pierce Lake area, which we think is, is very prospective to host another um, Moss Lake type uh, gold system or, or an extension of it. Um, you know, lots of lots of of, of uh, prospective ground left to, to go. We've got a lot of potential left. So I think uh, uh, we'll we'll be seeing some good good uh, good things come out of uh, Heronian in the future. Um, so now I'll just I'll go through through the Bluff Point project fairly quickly. Um, it's 100% owned as well. It's about 8,900 hectares in, in size. Uh, it's about 50 kilometers on strike from the Rainy River gold mine. So this is the Rainy River property here, um, and then the Rainy River structure runs up, and it sort of goes here, and then horse tails. through uh, Bluff Point. Um, 
there's lots of, of high high grade gold, uh, but also lots of bulk tonnage targets. Um, we're using what's what's not only called a porphyry type deposit, but it's effectively it's just a it's a granite hosted uh, uh, gold target in in the one sense that's what attracted us to the property originally. Um, so yeah, this slide shows sort of that that horse tailing. Um, so the 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 Rainy River trend comes up and hits the the granite here and um there's there's gold mineralization in the granite which is not typical of what uh um gold deposits in in northwestern ontario are they're typically hosted in the the green rocks the green and yellow rocks down down here um but the the straw lake trend we think you know it's it's the nexus for the the gold mineralization at the old straw lake mine um, as well as, as some gold mineralization here in the granite. Um, so effectively, similar to Heronium, we've got two target areas, essentially. We've got the, the bluff point type target, the, the granite hosted target in the, in the pink rocks. And then we've got the straw lake target uh, in the, 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 the green rocks in the south. Um, so most of our efforts in the past were, were, and why we picked up the property was was for the granite hosted. Um, but as that all that ground in the south started coming open, we've been uh, acquiring it through staking for the most part. We we purchased uh, uh, nine units uh, for a modest price uh, uh, back in the summer, um, just to sort of fill it out. There's still some holes. There's patents that are are where the actual straw lake mine was so so again similar situation to heronian it's it's a historic mine produced in the 30s produced a modest amount of gold but at, at fairly high grades um so again we still think there's a lot of potential down there and, and we're, we're just starting to 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 flesh out those those targets and get them drill ready um but the the main or the main focus in the past has been these granite hosted targets. These, uh, some people call them porphyry targets, they're granite hosted. Uh, so other examples are uh, Cote Lake, which is uh, I am Golden Sumitomo are, are putting into production. So I think uh, uh, commercial production is, is slated for uh, to start in the next couple of months, but it, it's a monster deposit. It's low grade, but it's it's huge it's you know 15 20 million ounces you know you can see these numbers 7 million ounces at one gram improving improbable uh 13.6 million ounces uh at just shy of a gram at, in uh measured and indicated another 5.7 uh, and inferred so it's a big gold system i think there's a lot more there they're still exploring uh, uh parts of that property and then another example is that hammond reef project that ignico uh has which is uh not far from heronian you know somewhere in between bluff point and and uh heronian um you know pretty decent size but it's a it's a granite hosted so an underexplored target type essentially in in uh in in the north in north northern ontario um so i i think you know it's it's something that's that's gonna um more eyes will get start getting on and, and as as the majors need to replace reserves they're going to be looking at these these big numbers you know something that's going to move the needle a 10 20 million ounce deposit is what's going to move the needle uh we picked up the property through staking um back in uh uh when we started the company in 2012 uh it was a an old uh pros a prospector discovered it in the 80s uh, some high grade grab samples. Homestake came in and uh, optioned the property in, and worked the, worked it in the late 80s into into the 90s. Um, it was remote access at the time. It was all float plains. There's no roads now. There's clear cut like uh, forestry roads, uh, primary forestry roads, and, and secondary and tertiary. So access is is excellent. Um, you know, drive everywhere in a truck pretty much uh, all through the property. Um, so we did quite a bit of, uh, mapping and trenching. We did a, a, a modest drill program in 2012. Um, 
first drill program on the property. We got some pretty good results in the trenching, some decent results also in, in the drilling. Um, but there's a lot of, it's a, it's a complicated system as these things are. Um, you know, if you know any of the history of Cote Lake, it, it took them a while to figure it out, but once they figured it out, it, it, uh, it really started rolling. So, um, and then, you know, since 2019, as those claims, uh, claims were dropped in the South, we've been, uh, expanding the property through staking, um, future plans. We've got more geophysics to, to do. We've got, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, targets to follow up through prospecting and obviously and then get get ready to to start drilling again so just to sum up uh Kessel run you know multiple high grade bulk tonnage gold targets you know both pro projects really have seen limited exploration uh, very shallow drilling uh you know northwestern Ontario is a top tier jurisdiction great place to work uh cost effective exploration um, you know, both projects are hundred percent owned, unencumbered. Uh, I'll mention there are NSRs on, on the projects of various degrees, nothing onerous two two and a half percent, um, highly experienced management team. Uh, you know, Flygate provides a great technical team when Kessler needs it. Uh, we've got a great, uh, uh, management team as well. Uh, so we're well positioned to, to take advantage of this rising gold market, which I think we're really just in the early stages of. So thank you. There's my contact info and feel free to reach out anytime. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks, Taylor. Yeah, so we'll uh, turn now to the Q&A uh, portion of the webinar. Just a reminder to everybody on the line, you can type in your questions at any point. Um, with that said, we do have a couple that have come in here. Um, let's start at the bottom. Um, did you make an evaluation of the potential on each project? Uh, an evaluation, well, I mean, we're continually evaluating through expiration. Um, did I evaluate them when I acquired them? Yes. Uh, if the question means an evaluation and so much as a, a resource estimate, no, we have not done a resource estimate as of yet on, on either project. We're, we're still a bit away from that. More exploration, more drilling to be done. Um, especially, at, you know, at Heronian would be the one that's a bit closer. Obviously, we've done a, a considerable amount of drilling, but but we still got a ways to go on, on that end. Uh, not nearly enough on on uh, on Bluff Point, um, but yeah, you know, just to touch on the evaluation uh, subject, yeah, th this my background is is uh, project generation and evaluation, um, so this is where Bluff Point came up with, uh, where we came up with the idea for Bluff Point. Uh, just to, to maybe I'll, we've got a bit of time, so. The consulting company was doing work for for uh, Brett Resources on Hammond Reef. Brett gets bought out by a Cisco, and then eventually a Cisco gets bought out by Agnico, but um, or by Kirkland Lake, and then Agnico. Anyways, long the long history of it, but effectively what happened was we we were you know doing this work for for a Cisco, and went hey this 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 granite hosted uh, uh, thing. You know, maybe this is an under under sort of uh, explored sort of concept, and then Cote Lake started getting uh, some some hits and some some uh, discoveries uh, in their early stages, and so we generated this project. Essentially, we we dug through old reports and um, you know drew circles on map we maps and and so it was a really a conceptual sort of project generative uh, thing, and we 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 found the 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 project we went out and, and did some boots on the ground evaluation looked at some rocks like what we saw staked it so perfect okay um next question here um i guess it's referring to huronian here what uh what state is the the old mine in is what kind of rehabilitation work can be done if any um well, none of those, like in that that black and white photo with all these buildings, the buildings are gone. Um, 
the a lot of the foundations are still there, but you know they're pushing 100 years old, um, so they're not in great condition. The workings are there. Um, you know the 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 shafts are 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 open. They're, they're open holes in 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 the ground essentially. They're chain link fenced off for for safety precaution, but uh, um, presumably they could be dewatered and, and rehabilitated if that made sense. Uh, at some point, that's a, a question that would be answered uh, uh, down the road. Um, you know, obviously, we'd have to to assess the situation to some degree and decide if it made economic sense to to dewater and, and rehabilitate and, and utilize those openings. So it's possible. So I, I've seen it in other projects. So it, it certainly uh, is a possibility, no matter how old it is. You know, it's it's over a hundred years old in, in places. All right, all right, perfect. Okay, um, so just uh, speaking about some of the the zones and kind of the behavior of the mineralization, how how are you, um, or what are you observing as you've been drilled as you've drilled deeper in these zones? How's the mineralization? Is it widening or narrowing or just staying consistent at the depth uh, that you've drilled to so far? Um, I'd say the on average, there's it's staying consistent. Um, in places that you know it, it's it is widening in, in certain zones we do you know we're, we're still sort of trying to wrap our head around around what's going on i think there's you know for the geologists not to geek out too much but there's there's uh interfering structures and so there's there the zones widen out they thin out and you know when i was talking about those treasure boxes these big blowouts we're trying to really understand why they're occurring and, and where so we can be predictive and go, OK, there should be another one here. Uh, um, so we're, we are seeing it in other zones where you start to see a widening out a little bit higher grade and then it thins back to more average uh, widths. So think about a, a like an ice cube tray, like a there's there's an interference pattern. And, and so you get these these blowouts every once in a while. Um, Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but on average, it, it, I would say it's, it's consistent. Right. Okay. Um, but I guess with that said, the, the, it would be easier at the present time to keep expanding um, kind of laterally or along trend rather than chasing it at depth at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we, we had sort of a, our philosophy, our exploration philosophy or, or, or a plan uh, in 2021 when we, when we really started drilling uh, in earnest was was uh, we would expand the footprint a, a certain amount on the zone. Uh, we would then start to infill a little bit just to show that that it is consistent, that we can uh, drill the density required to, to do a resource. Uh, realized as the market was sort of softening, that was, that was potentially unsustainable and we weren't really getting any traction on that from the market. So decided to, to Pivot slightly and and concentrate on expanding the footprints of these zones, um, and then obviously uh, uh, as well as as discovering new zones, and so it was a it was a nice way we didn't actually have to to put too many meters specifically about uh, targeting discovering new zones because it was coming naturally as we were stepping out to 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 expand say the Fisher zone we were hitting new zones in, in, you know, above and below it, essentially. When we were t targeting Heronian, we were discovering new zones. We were discovering extensions of known zones as well and saying, oh, it's it's, it's over here. So it, again, lends itself to, to very cost-effective exploration. Um, you know, going forward, we will have to, you know, go back to the twofold method of, of expanding those known zones uh, footprint wise, but also, you know, coming back and, and, uh, and doing that infill drilling that, that would be required to, to get it to a, a resource estimate, uh, level. Right. Okay. And, um, I guess looking forward to this year, what does exploration look like if you, if you kind of have a shoestring budget or if capital markets improve and you can do a larger raise? Well, yeah, the answer is yes. It, it, like currently, you know, the gold price is, is doing quite well, uh, Pulled back a little bit today, but that's uh, not to be unexpected. So uh, I'll use 2020 as an example. You know, we we when the markets started really taking off, 
we we did a modest raise to do our, our first little small drill program to really you know reintroduce the project to the market and you know had really good results uh got got good traction the the stock went up uh to a point where we could uh um you know make do a sizable raise at a reasonable price uh so we we you know raised six hundred thousand dollars at a, a price that effectively I wouldn't want to raise much more than that and then raise six million at, at you know high 20s low 30s um and then you know later raise three million a, another year later at in the uh, around 20 cents i think it was um so we're, we're going to take the same approach essentially it's essentially we're looking at at this market as as repeating itself again in, in a sort of sentiment way and and we'll re uh, when when we feel the time is right we'll we'll do a modest raise um test some of these targets that and and you know get some good results get the stock moving a little bit and do a, a more sizable raise to really hit hit the hit the property hard again um but when the market's ready when it's conducive you know no use raising five million dollars now at, at say five cents it's that's not going to do anybody any good yeah for sure for sure <clears throat> okay i'm just looking here i don't see any um other questions that have come in so maybe um if you have any final pitch for investors mike before we wrap up uh let you go ahead yeah i think i mean you know er if you're a gold bug, I'm a gold bug. I think, you know, not to get into the macroeconomics, but I think we're going to see um, much higher gold prices. It's not, not an if, it's just a when. So, you know, position yourself with a, a, a company that's going to um, be able to take advantage of that. We've got a, a, a you know, our Heronian Gold Project is right next door to, to Moss Lake. It's going to you're going to see good things come out of out of Moss Lake. You know they they've gone from three million ounces to to six plus. They're going to go much higher, in my opinion, from what I've seen of the data uh, and my my take on it. They're going to go much higher. So being next door with a project that's slightly different, but but in my opinion, just as good as Gold Shores is. You know you'd be well positioned in this market, and then you know Bluff Point again is also. Um, you know, it's got a lot of greenfield potential. It's it's got the potential to host that elephant deposit that that you know majors are looking for to to replace their ounces. Uh, so we're well positioned. We 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 own them 100. So we're not under any stress to um, to do stupid things. We we aren't going to be forced to do things that that aren't conducive to to the shareholder value. That's the long winded version of of my my 30 second pitch, but. But yeah, we're we're in a good position. You know, we've got a little bit of cash. We're 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 we've got a great team. So, good things to come. Yeah, we'll uh, see what happens. Uh, you know, with the the gold price and if equities follow, and we're all hoping for that. So, uh, you know, hopefully, it's not an if; it's just a win. That's true. That's true.